it's been a long day. It's been a long day? No, it's been a long month. My whole life feels derailed. I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be. I try to convince myself everything's for a reason, but I can't combat my own loneliness. I just seem to feel worse every day. It started in December. I've gotten to a point where I'm questioning my life purpose. It's something I haven't done in a really long time. Everything used to be perfect. Well, not perfect, but definitely not this. It's unlike me to question my purpose. I guess that stresses how far away from feeling like the self I was before the accident. Part of me feels I'll never be the same. Part of me knows that I'll never be the same. And I really try to be. I really try to be consistent. I've been doing everything I can to feel like my old self, but nothing works. Nothing at all. I'm sure everybody's like, oh, this isn't like a normal Carla video. This is fucking creepy. You're about to find out why. Do you know what this is? No, you don't. Come here. Do you guys? Oh, what the fuck? Did I just hurt myself? Oh, I totally did. What the fuck is on my bed? That's so short. You guys like fairy tales? I don't know about you guys, but I like fairy tales. Do you guys like fairy tales? I'm not talking about the Disney rendition of Cinderella. I'm talking about like the real one that I have in this book right here that we're gonna read today. Cause as far as I remember in the Disney animation, they weren't chopping off parts of each other's feet to try to fit. Spoiler alert, that happens. Maybe, I don't know, I'm, that's why we're reading it. No, but in case you don't actually know, the real grim fairy tales are not child appropriate by any means. They were written for children, I think to scare them. In which case it fucking scares me as an adult, so it worked. I have bookmarked here. That's the real Cinderella. So I'm gonna read it out loud like a little storybook. I also applied to be a teacher today. So if I'm a teacher, I'm a, maybe I'm a teacher mindset already, I don't know. So this is my scary bedtime story to everybody. The wife of a rich man fell sick as she felt that her end was drawing near. She called her only daughter to her bedside and said, Dear child, be good and pious, then the God will always protect thee. I will look down on thee from heaven and be near thee. Thereupon she closed her eyes and departed. Oh my God. Fuck, how can I take anything serious? So the rich man's wife just died. Every day, the maiden went out to her mother's grave and wept. She remained pious and good. When winter came, the snow spread like a white sheet over the grave. And when the spring sun had dawned off it again, the man had taken another wife. Damn, that quick, huh? The woman had, <laughs> the woman had brought two daughters into the house with her, who were beautiful and fair-faced, but vile and black of heart. Now began a bad time for the poor stepchild. It is the stupid goose to sit in the parlor with us, said they. He who wants to eat bread must earn it. Out with the kitchen, wench. They took her pretty clothes away from her, put an old gray bed gown on her, and gave her wooden shoes. Just look at the proud princess, how decked out she is, they cried. <laughs> decked out? <laughs> it says it, wait. 
How decked out she is. Just look at the proud princess, how decked out she is, they cried and laughed and led her into the kitchen. There she had to do hard work from morning till night, get up before daybreak, carry water, light fires, cook and wash. Besides this, the sisters did her every imaginable injury. They mocked her and emptied her peas and lentils into the ashes, so she was forced to sit and pick them out again. In the evening, when she had worked till she was weary and she had no bed to go to, but had to sleep by the fireside in the ashes, and on that account, she always looked dusty and dirty. They called her Cinderella. It happened that the father was once going to the fair and he asked his two stepdaughters what he should bring back for them. Beautiful dresses, one said. Pearls and jewels, said the other one. And thou, Cinderella, said he, what wilt thou have? She said, father, break off the... What? This is also so I can work on my newfound speech impediment from the car crash. Father, break off for me the first branch which knocks against your hat on the way home. So he bought beautiful dresses, pearls, and jewels for his two stepdaughters, and on his way home, as he was riding through a green thicket, a hazel twig brushed against him and knocked off his hat. Then he broke off the branch and took it with him. When he reached home, he gave his stepdaughters the things that he, they had wished for, and to Cinderella he gave the branch from the hazel bush. Cinderella thanked him, went to her mother's grave, and planted the branch of it, and wept so much that the tears fell down and watered it. Well, that wouldn't happen. Tears are salty. It grew, however, and became a handsome tree. Thrice a day, Cinderella went and sat beneath it. Thrice a day, Cinderella went out and sat beneath it and wept and prayed. And a little white bird always came down the tree. And if Cinderella expressed a wish, the bird threw down to her what she had wished for. It had happened, however, that the king appointed a festival which was to last three days to which all of the beautiful young girls in the country were invited in order that his son might choose himself a wife. Ugh. When the two stepsisters heard they were... <laughs> Hey guys. When the two stepsisters heard they too were to appear among their number, they were delighted and called Cinderella and asked, comb, comb our hair for us, brush our shoes and fasten our buckles. We're going to the festival at the king's palace. Cinderella obeyed, but wept because she too would have liked to go with them to the dance and begged her stepmother to allow her to do so. Go thou, Cinderella, she said. Thou art dusty and dirty and wouldn't to go to the festival. Thou has no clothes and no shoes and yet th wouldst dance? As however, Cinderella went on asking, the stepmother at last said, I have emptied a dish of lentils into the ashes for thee. If thou hast picked them out again in two hours, thou shalt go with us. The maiden then went through the back door into the garden and called, you tame pigeons, you turtle doves, and all you birds beneath the sky, come and help to pick the good into the pot and the bad into the crop. Then two white pigeons came in by the kitchen window, and afterwards the turtle doves. And last, all the birds beneath the sky came whirring and crowding in and alighted amongst the ashes. And the pigeons nodded with their heads and began pick, 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 and the rest began pick, 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 and gathered all of the good grains into the dish. Hardly one hour had passed before they had finished, and the birds flew out again. The girl then took the dish to her stepmother, who was glad and believed that she would be allowed to go with them to the festival. But the stepmother said, No, Cinderella, thou hast no clothes, and thou hast, canst not dance. Thou wouldst only be laughed at. And as Cinderella wept at this, the stepmother said, If you can't pick two dishes of lentils out of the ashes for me in one hour, you can go with us. That's me saying it. That's not the old English. I can't read it that quick. And she thought to herself, That most certainly she cannot do. When the stepmother had emptied the two dishes of lentils in amongst the ashes, the maiden went out into the back door into the garden and cried, you tame pigeons, you turtle doves, all you birds beneath the sky. Come and help me to pick the good into the pot and the bad into the crop. Then two white pigeons came in by the kitchen window and afterwards the turtle doves, and at length all the birds beneath the sky came worrying and crowding in and lighted amongst the ashes. And the doves nodded with their heads and began, pick, 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 and the others went, pick, 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 and gathered all of the good seeds in the dishes. And gathered all of the good seeds into the dish. And gathered all of the good seeds into the dishes. And before half an hour was over, they had already finished and all flew out again. Then the maiden carried the dishes to her stepmother and was delighted. She believed that she might now go with them to the festival. But the stepmother said, All of this will not help thee. Thou goes not with us, for thou hast no clothes, and thou can't dance. We should be ashamed of you. 
On this, she turned her back on Cinderella and hurried away with her two proud daughters. As no one was at home now, Cinderella went to her mother's grave again beneath the hazel tree and cried. Shiver and quiver, little tree, silver and gold throw down on me. Then the bird threw a gold and silver dress down to her and slippers embroidered with silk and silver. She put the dress on with all speed and she went to the festival. God, I wish that would happen to me. I wish I could talk to birds and they would give me gold and shit. Her stepsisters and the stepmother, however, did not recognize her. She thought she must be a foreign princess. She looked so beautiful in the golden dress. They never once thought it was Cinderella. They believed she was sitting at home in the dirt, picking out lentils out of the ashes. The prince went to meet her, took her by the hand and danced with her. He would dance with no other maiden and never let loose of her hand. And if anyone else came to invite her, he said, this is my partner. Oh, damn. Partner. I want a partner. She danced till it was evening and then she waited to go home. But then the king's son said, I will go with you and bear you company. For he wished to see who the beautiful maiden belonged. She escaped from him, however, and sprang into the pigeon house. The king's son waited until her father came. And then he told them that the stranger maiden had leapt into the pigeon house. The old man thought, can it be Cinderella? And they had to bring an, <laughs> and they had to bring him an ax and a pickaxe that he might, what even, what language is this? Okay, so she dipped and went into the pigeon house. Okay, she left. The old man thought, could it be Cinderella? And they had to bring him an ax and a pickaxe that he might hoe the pigeon house down to pieces, but no one was inside of it. And when they got home, Cinderella was laying in her dirty clothes among the ashes and a dim little oil lamp was burning down on the mantelpiece for Cinderella had jumped quickly down and back from the tree in the pigeon house and had run into the little hazel tree. And there she had taken off her beautiful clothes and laid them on the grave and the bird had taken them away again. And then she placed herself in the kitchen amongst the ashes in her gray gown as usual. Next day when the festival began afresh and her parents and the sisters had gone once more, Cinderella went to the hazel tree and said, shiver and quiver little tree, silver and gold throw down over me. And then the bird threw down a much more beautiful dress on the preceding day. And when Cinderella appeared at the festival in this dress, everyone was astonished at her beauty. The king's son had waited until she came and instantly took her by the hand and danced with her, no one but her. When others came and invited her, she said, she's my partner. When evening came, she wished to leave and the king's son followed her and wanted to see in which house she went into. <laughs> then she sprang away from him and into the garden behind the house. Therein stood a beautiful tall tree which hung the most magnificent pears. She clambered so nimbly between the branches like a squirrel, but the king's son did not know where she had gone. He waited until her father came and said to him, the stranger maiden has escaped from me and I can believe she has climbed up a pear tree. The father thought, can it be Cinderella? And had an ax brought down to cut the tree down, but no one was on it. When they got back into the kitchen, Cinderella lay down there amongst the ashes as usual, for she had jumped down on the other side of the tree and taken her beautiful dress to the little bird on the hazel tree and put on her gray gown again. On the third day, when the parents and sisters had gone away, Cinderella went once more to her mother's grave and said to the little tree, shiver and quiver, little tree, Silver and gold throw down over me. And now the little bird threw down to her a dress, which was even more splendid and magnificent than any dress she had ever had. And the slippers were golden. And when she went to the festival in the dress, no one knew how to speak for astonishment. The king's son danced with her and her only. And if anyone invited her to dance, he said, she's my partner. When the evening came, Cinderella wished to leave. And the king's son was so anxious to go with her, but she escaped him so quickly that he could not follow her. The king's son, however, used a stratagem. Ah, he's got a trapper. He's got a trapper. He's like, this is the third night. She's not escaping me this time. The king's son, however, had used a stratagem, which had caused the whole staircase to be smeared with pitch. And there she ran down, had the maiden's slipper left remain sticking. The king's son picked it up. It was small, dainty, and made of gold. Hello. Oh my God, it's just like you. Next morning, he went with it to Cinderella's father and said to him, no one shall be my wife, no one shall be my wife, but who's, no one shall be my wife, but she whose foot this golden slipper fits. I'm not gonna marry anyone except who fits the shoe, okay? Then the two sisters were glad for they had pretty feet. <laughs> it says that. 
Then were the two sisters glad, for they had pretty feet. The eldest went with the shoe into her room and wanted to try it on, and the mother stood by. But she could not get her big toe into it, and the shoe was too small for her. Then her mother gave her a knife and said, Here, cut the toe off. When you're queen, you won't have to walk anymore. Go on, cut your toe off. The maiden cut the toe off, forced the foot into the shoe, swallowed the pain, and went out to the king's son. Then he took her on his horse as his bride, and he rode away with the first sister. They were, however, <laughs> obliged to pass the grave, and there on the hazel tree sat the two pigeons and cried, Turn and peep, turn and peep, there is blood within the shoe. The shoe is too small for her, the true bride waits for you. Then he looked at her foot and saw how the blood was streaming from it. He turned his horse around and took one false bride home again, as she said she was not the one and that the other sister was to put the shoe on. Then this one went into her chamber and got her toes safely into the shoe, but her heel was too large. So her mother gave her the same knife and said, cut a bit off thy heel. When you're queen, you won't have to walk anyway. The maiden cut off a bit of her heel, forced her foot into the shoe, swallowed the pain and went out to the king's son. He took her on his horse as his bride and rode away with her. But when they passed by the hazel tree, the two little pigeons sat and cried, Turn and peep, turn and peep, there is blood in the shoe. The shoe is too small for her, the true bride waits for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> he looked down at her foot and saw that the blood was running out of her shoe and how it stained her white stocking. Then he turned his horse and took the false bride home again. This is also not the right one, he said. Have you no other daughter? No, said the man. Wow, what the dickhead? Aw, he just said no. This is his kid. This is, she doesn't even have any other parents except for this rich dude. And he says he doesn't have any other kids. He's her only real kid. Or she, she's his only real kid. Have you no other daughter? No, said the man. There is a little stunted kitchen wench, which in my life... That's so mean. There is a little stunted kitchen wench, which my late wife left behind her, but she cannot possibly be the bride. The king's son said he was to send her up to him, but the mother answered, Oh no, she is much too dirty. She cannot show herself. He absolutely insisted on it, and Cinderella had to be called. She first washed her hands and face clean, and then went down to bow before the king's son, who gave her the golden shoe. Then she seated herself on a stool, drew her foot out of the heavy wooden shoe, and put it in the slipper, which fitted like a glove. When she rose up, the king's son looked at her face and recognized the beautiful maiden who had danced with him and cried, That is the true bride. The stepmother and sisters were terrified and became pale with rage. He, however, took Cinderella on his horse and rode away with her. As they passed by the hazel tree, the two white doves cried, Turn and peep, turn and peep. There is no blood is in the shoe. The shoe is not too small for her. The true bride rides with you. And when they had cried after that, the two came flying down and placed themselves on Cinderella's shoulders one on the right and the other on the left, and remained sitting there. When the wedding with the king's son had to be celebrated, the two false sisters came and wanted to get in favor with Cinderella and share her good fortune. Of course they want to get on her good side. She, get, she got their fucking plate. Oh, God, man, this, this is fake as fuck. The false sisters wanted to get into favor with Cinderella and share her good fortune. When the betrothed couple went to church, the elder was at the right side and the younger at the left, and the pigeons pecked out the eye of each one of them. Afterwards, as they came back, the elder was at the left and the younger at the right, and the pigeons picked out the other eye of each sister. And thus, for their wickedhood and falsehood, they were punished with blindness as long as they lived. The end. Don't you guys fucking love fairy tales? Because I love that shit. What the hell? They told that to kids? So I wanted to illuminate everyone's view of what we know Cinderella as. Yeah, that's the original. It's not what we know it as. I think it's crazy, personally. And I think I'm going to make more videos of me reading other story tales since there's so many of them in this book. Each of them are only a few pages. So I don't know how many there are. There's like over 100. There's like 130 in here, I think. There's so many stories I could read. I could do a series forever, to be honest. I hope you enjoyed the uh, bedtime story. <laughs>